Hey everyone, it's Dominic from the Primetime Treasure eBay store and YouTube channel. Should I feel bad that I'm about to go pick a convent? Mm, nope. So there's the sign, and there you can see we've got the line of people there waiting to get in. They don't know that Primetime Treasure's here, ready to come in and get some good items. So this is associated with a school. It's a pretty big place. Um, there's three floors. These are all the cars for the state cell lined up, so I'm just gonna pull right behind. But yeah, there's three floors, and I'll take you inside and uh, see if we can find anything good. Yeah, apparently this convent is going out of business. Uh, maybe business isn't exactly the right term, but it's closing down. So uh, I saw some pictures online. Again, lots of religious figures uh, do really well with old vintage of religious books, old Bibles you could sell really well. So, you know, anything that people have an emotional attachment to, you know, could, could equal money, especially if it's vintage. So um, we're gonna head over right now. chalkware items but not for that check some of this out all right nothing here for me I'm just gonna move back here thanks still in the basement area if you are into big stuff like desks and stuff I mean there's lots of stuff you could get here for your business so this would be a good place if you're into that kind of stuff and in here for me Gonna move on to the next area. Not much here for me, mostly big items. Mostly big items in here as well that I can't do anything with. On the second floor. Wow. That is a big. <laughs> Jesus, oh, I'm sure it is. How much? 300, yeah, $395. For, oh, yeah, that's beautiful. Wow. That's incredible. Absolutely beautiful. So, this is the dining room area. And one of the things I'm going to take a look at here and I think I'm going to wind up getting is this 3D Virgin Mary, Mary Madonna vintage frame for 8 bucks. This is definitely going to sell for much more than that. So it's nice and light, um, has a nice spirituality to it. And um, the fact that it pops out like that in a 3D look is just a nice selling point. So. Um, there's nothing like this online right now. It definitely sell. I'm gonna check out some of these crucifixes as well. Uh, see if there might be any value in that. This is very common. You're gonna see this one a lot um, when it's on the wood plaque like this. You know, it's not gonna be worth anything. I've said this before. I know it sounds bad, but Mary and Madonna-like images actually sell much better than Jesus does. <laughs> it's weird, but it's true. See now, here's the problem with this one. You just can't flip this one good online for 25. It's just not gonna work. <laughs> this one's interesting. Was this Jesus when he was in college or something? <laughs> I don't know. A bit more books. I looked through them. It's not worth anything. Hallway goes all the way down here on the second floor to down here a little bit more. And then there's a third floor we're gonna hit up. I don't know if there's anything over here. 
something here. Things here. Not really the stuff I'm into. Yep. But uh, take a look here. See if there's any value in this stuff. Now, this is like the holy room headquarters where they, you know, store all the stuff that they bring out and stuff. All these like chalices and things. So I don't know. There's some drawers here to pull out. So I don't know if there's anything in here, but I know. Uh, the problem is the price. 175. Just can't do it. You know, even even these over here, which are cool, eight bucks a piece. Just can't do anything with them. You know, even these things here, which I'm not really into, but you know, ten bucks a pop for them. Yeah. I'm not gonna be able to do anything with those either. All right, I'm gonna head up to floor three. See if there's anything on floor three and how big it is. Hmm, looks like a lot of rooms to check out. Some are quite bare. The rooms, and there's just nothing in it. I mean, I guess that's not surprising. What do you expect in a convent? There's, you know, there's, yeah, don't expect like rock and roll posters on the wall or anything like that. So, oh well, no figures in here. Well, you know, I never picked a convent before. It's a first for me. Uh, I don't know if anyone of you ever have either. If you have, let me know what your experiences were like below. Uh, I have to tell you, it was pretty bare in there. The things that they did have, the religious figures I was looking for, as you could see, the prices were just way too high. I love the person who runs the sale. I get great stuff from her that's unmarked, but the marked stuff like that, uh, she just prices it up. Uh, and, you know, she'll get that price, but some people that just go in there just to buy it for their own purposes, you know, they're not buying it to resell it. And so, you know, that's okay. Uh, so, you know, my goal is to find a thing that, you know, that I could use. I, I really think I will do well with that 3D uh, Virgin Mary slash Madonna, uh, you know, picture frame that I got. So, you know, we'll see what happens with that one. Uh, and now we're just gonna move on to the next thing. Uh, I will just tell you one other thing, you know, there, what I was trying to find there where there were lots of, um, there were lots of books. There were lots of bins with books that I showed you, but unfortunately the nuns that live there, they just, uh, they didn't read anything that was too collectible. So, uh, I don't know what's up with that, but, um, just really wasn't anything in there that had any value. So, Unfortunately, uh, we're gonna uh, come out of there with only one thing, but uh, you know, sometimes that's how the cookie crumbles and uh, we're uh, off to some more sales. This is a little um, surprise garage sale that pop up across the uh, church that I picked at recently at an estate sale where I found that Donkey Kong plush toy. So let's see if there's anything good here. All sorts of good stuff here for good prices. You got books, you got DVDs. Got some clothes on the rack, although none of those were good, but they're only a dollar. And lots of books and collectibles, so we're gonna check these out. Now this is pretty interesting. I did pick out this one hard DVD, you know, I picked these up for a buck and I put them sell them in lots, but this is pretty cool. These are all horror photos from New Line Cinema, Freddy Krueger. Let's see what he wants for these, I'm not sure. This one. Ooh, some other weird photos back here. How much are the uh, photos? Uh, about each. Okay. All right, mixing up the views for you, trying some different angles, keeping you on your toes a little bit. Um, I did pick up this one, The Grudge Horror DVD. Again, I take these, I buy them for a dollar or less. I build little lots out of them for like, you know, 10 or more and uh, sell them off on eBay for a nice profit. I talked to you before about Diary to Wimpy Kid books. Make sure they are hardcover and make sure you open them up and look inside for no names and no creased pages. There were four there and the other three had names scribbled all inside of it. Pages were wrinkled and creased. 
make sure the spine's not significantly damaged in any way. So pick this one up and I just have a bunch of other ones that I added to. Another thing that I have not shown before that I highly advise picking up if you see them are Dragonlance books. Now I read these as a kid. It was one of my first uh, books I ever read that was a fantasy type book in the 1980s. Uh, this is one of them right here, Dragons of Spring Dawning. They're easy to identify because they're they're all going to say Dragonlance right across the top. And depending on what kind of Dragonlance books you find, they could be worth some significant cash. For the paperback ones like this, I suggest taking them, lotting them together, and selling them off as a group. Um, they do come in series, so this is called Chronicles Volume 3. So ideally you would have Volume 1 and 2, but people will buy mixed lots of these. Also look at the year it was published because these are reprinted with different covers. This is the original cover uh, from early on. So this one, if we open it up inside and you could just check, you'll see there is from 1985. And that's what you're looking for ideally, are these paperback ones because you really can't find them um, you know, now with, uh, you know, if you tried to order this book, you could get it on Amazon, but you know, the old version of it with the old, uh, cover on it, that's not what they're going to send you. If you try to buy it new, they're going to send you some updated one that they printed recently. Uh, but so I picked up, let's see, one, two, three, four. Now there were more than this there, five and six. There were more than these there, but again, you got to check condition. So I open them up and some of them were real damaged. There were chunks of covers that were pulled off of it. You don't want that stuff. You know, for the most part, you know, you really want to try to stick with things that have as minimal damage as possible. Unless it's a super rare piece, then you could accept some damage, but not for Dragonlance books. You want to get them in pretty good shape, even if they're from the 80s. But the best find that I had there, now all this stuff that you see was priced for a buck. This here, also for a buck, I showed it to you when I was flipping through that booklet. This is Our Gang. It's the precursor to the Little Rascals that was made by Hal Roach. There's a little comedy series and then it started in 1922. Uh, the back of this one says that it came from 1927. So one that was like this sold it was from 1925 a very similar picture sold on ebay recently for 56 dollars plus some shipping i don't know if this one will go for quite that much i'm not sure but i still think it's a good pickup for a dollar and all this stuff wound up being less than a dollar because a total of i believe nine items and when i went to check out i just said how much you want for all this stuff and he just said just give me five dollars so uh ultimately winds up being about 50 cents a piece now, while I'm at the sale, I get a call from a supervisor from eBay because I have been calling them since the end of March to try to figure out why my listings do not show the number of watchers that I have on it to a prospective buyer. It does show to me when I look at in my eBay and I have noticed that other sellers that watchers show up for them. So I've been calling for months. I've been told I was going to get a call back. I never got a call back until today. The person who I dealt with was helpful uh, and did tell me that the number of watchers are no longer going to show up to buyers unless it is for a multi-item listing. So let's say you have five of a certain item, then it will show up. Now it makes no sense to me why you would show that for a multi-item listing, but not for a single item listing and let me make my case to eBay if eBay is watching this as to why you should put back the number of watchers now I know what I'm gonna hear from some people is that the number of watchers don't mean anything that's not true that's not an absolute rule it doesn't always mean something yes you could sell things that have no watchers and not make a sale on something that is 10 watchers that's true but the number of watchers does at least indicate a level of interest and in my experience that level of interest does correlate not a hundred percent but it does correlate to an increased likelihood that you're going to make a sale and there's a psychological aspect to it that's important if a buyer sees that there's eight watchers on an item 
then they are more likely, especially if it's something that looks pretty desirable, they are more likely to make an offer or just purchase it, buy it now because they don't want one of those other eight people to get it. And you as the seller could also use that as a negotiation strategy. And I used to do that in the past. I would tell somebody, you know, uh, sorry, this is a low ball offer. I have eight watchers on this item and I'm pretty confident that it's going to sell. And then the next thing that I get back is a much higher offer that allows the deal to go through and I could, you know, make the sale. So, or there's been instances where someone might send me an offer like really early in the morning and I might be sleeping for the three hours that I get of sleep sometimes. And uh, then the person doesn't hear back. They get nervous because there's eight watchers on it and then they go ahead and they buy it now. So, I think now eBay could could probably do something to track this you know, numerically with data, but I do think that it is going to decrease sales, and ultimately, you know, that's not a good thing. I don't know if the reason why they changed it is because they think that this number of watchers doesn't mean anything, but that can't be the reason because if that was the reason, you wouldn't keep it for multi-item listings and get rid of it for single-item listings. So eBay, bring back the watchers for the single item listings, please. All right, I'm off to my next thing. So I was just about to head off to another sale when I checked my email and I got a response to one of my Craigslist ads that there's a woman who has five boxes of comic books, including Star Wars and that type of stuff, and she's trying to liquidate and she is trying to pay off bills. A lot different than the situation that I came across yesterday. So look at uh, the the video from yesterday where I was trying to buy a comic book collection from a seller. Um, this is a lot different. This is someone who's motivated to sell. So I am hopeful I can make a good deal. I'm heading over there right now. I happen to not be far from it and we'll see what happens. Before I head off, I just went and checked the email over again. One other thing that's really potentially good about this, this is all stuff from her father's estate. And so she sounded like she's in like her 40s or something like that. So uh, if it's from her father's estate, I mean, this could be some really good old vintage stuff. So we'll see. All right, guys, don't kill me. Don't kill me. This is everything. It's all old military books for the most part. Some of these are really old. Cool. Set issues. Well, I am back empty handed once again. Uh, you know, it was a cool collection in the sense that they were really old books. They were mostly bagged and boarded. Uh, the problem with it, though, is that they were in a very narrow niche market, which is the old uh, military war comic books. Now, they do have value. It's not that they don't have value, but in a collection like that you would like to see some superhero books mixed in like some old superman some old spider-man that really would kick the value up because you know modern day collectors who you know like superman and spider-man they do try to get those old books but there's a very narrow market of people who are, you know in current generation who want to go and get 1960s military books i mean the type of person who's trying to get something like that would really be somebody who's you know around 70 years old who's trying to you know reclaim a collection or maybe someone younger who just happens to have a specialty interest in that area but that person's going to be much harder to find than the person who likes the superhero books anyway regardless of that the price that she wanted on those books was just uh way 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 too much she wanted $1,800 for five long boxes. And that is absolutely out of bounds in terms of something that you should pay for a collection like that. You know, you can't really even make a deal in that situation because you're just so far apart. Um, you know, for a standard 
long box of comic books, and I know this is more than a standard long box of comic books, but you're talking 15 to $20 a box. Now you could kick it up more than that because it is you know, a special type of collection. Uh, however, it's not gonna kick up to the range of $1,800. Uh, now, when I went up into that shed area, there were a ton of models, um, Ravel models and other models for, you know, cars and, you know, body parts like brains and heads and skulls that were, you know, they were uh, mint in the box. Um, they, the guy apparently worked for a model company, so he had access to some exclusive models. But the uh, problem is, again, the price range for what they wanted up there was just you know, too much for what I would be willing to pay. I mean, they're over like $1,000 on the model. So, um, you know, that's not what I was hoping for. I was hoping that I would find somebody who truly was wanting to liquidate. Um, but she really wasn't uh, looking to liquidate. Um, she wants to get rid of stuff, but she really you know, was trying to turn a, you know, a nice profit on it, uh, as opposed to trying to blow it out. And, you know, I'm looking for the person who wants to blow it out. I'm not looking to buy it from the person who wants to flip it for, you know, making a lot of money on it. Um, you know, that's what I'm trying to do. So, um, you know, there's a lot of, um, you know, leads like this that, you know, you get and they sound like they're promising, but then you get there, it don't work out. So that's two in a row in the same area. Maybe I just need to stay away from this area. Uh, for now on but uh you just got to keep on going you got to keep on trying because trust me there'll be another day where i am filming that i wind up getting another collection like this and making a lot of money on hey it's the end of the night here uh no more sales but uh i am headed into home depot because i'm gonna pick up another storage uh shelving unit so i figured i'd just show you the one that I get that I like. Um, I think I said before I got it at Lowe's and I might've got one at Lowe's, but they also sell it at Home Depot. I'm gonna show you what it is. All right, everyone. So we are in Home Depot and I wanna show you what the three main options that you have for storage shelves, okay? This one is gonna be your biggest option. This one is 48 by 24 length and 78 inches high. Now for most people, that is going to be too big okay so then you got this one over here now this one by the way runs you $89.97 okay this one here is about 60 bucks now this is 36 with 18 inches long 60 inches high it's not bad but it's not quite as high as I would like so this one's a little bit too small this one's a little bit too big so we're gonna use the Goldilocks approach to find the one that's just right. And that would be this one right here. This is the one I love. This is 36 inches in width, 18 inches long, but it's 72 inches high, so it gives you an extra shelf. It gives you a fifth shelf. You can see that all the way up there compared to that one there, which doesn't quite go as high. So that's only giving you four shelves. This gives you an extra shelf, and that extra shelf is worth its weight in gold. Trust me, you'll want that. So spend a little bit extra for it. This one's gonna cost you 70. Again, that one's gonna cost you 60, and that one's gonna cost you 90. So as in most situations in life, what's right in the middle, moderation tends to be the best. This is the one we're gonna go with. So it comes in this flat box here. And this is what you're looking for, okay? You can carry it yourself, or you might need some uh, some help, but you know, you could, most guys could usually pick that one up themselves. Uh, this one is made by a company called Edsol, and that's the one that I would suggest. Um, that's the one that I use. I have many of these throughout Primetime Treasure headquarters and highly suggest you using them. So then you just pick it up, make sure you have a flatbed like this right here. I already put mine down, so you're all set. You know, and then you just turn it around, push it off, and you're all set to go. So I uh, hope you like this video. If you did, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you drop a comment down below if you have a comment or a question. Come to my Facebook group, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center. And very important, make sure you subscribe to this channel to support it. It helps get you some notifications about new videos that are coming out. 
and it's also just a good uh, sign that the videos are helpful and useful for you and that's a way to communicate that to me. So thank you very much. I'll see you at the next one.